Hey, this is Bobby from BrewHardware.com, and we got a couple of requests to do a demonstration on our new pull-through tools. I've already shown off the traditional pull-through tool that is meant to install traditional half-inch MPT type fittings like this one here. So that's the tool that we've been selling for quite some time for that. But we just recently developed this one that will actually install an inch and a half TC weld ferrule into a pot and allow you to solder it in and uh, has a lot of advantages over other methods. I don't have one of those fittings handy, but uh, the old solder in flange that we sold was um, a specifically machined piece that made it easier to solder onto the surface of a pot, but this allows you to use an off-the-shelf four dollar basically four or five dollars for that weld ferrule and get a similarly robust and pretty sanitary job as well so uh obviously these are different tools they do have some things in common one thing being there's a center bolt that goes through here this is hardened grade five as well as the nut so that it can stand up to a lot of uses and the this would be a die if this was like a, a flaring tool. That would be like the die itself to hold the metal back. Obviously, it's much bigger on the TC version of that tool. And whereas the half-inch version of this process uses bulkhead fittings that have its own expanding or tapered leading edge uh, for making that flare in the hole, uh, the TC version requires a specialty machined piece and because you can't really make this tapered and still retain that wide open uh, inch and three eighths ID. So this, uh, this little bullet here kind of installs on the leading edge of the TC ferrule uh, as a temporary uh, flaring tool. So this is available as a standalone pull-through tool for TC, like shown here, and so is the half-inch pull-through tool. However, because you might be building a pot and need TC and MPT parts, we also offer it as a combo tool, which basically just repeats the use of the, uh, the center bolt and hardware. So what you would end up with is this package right here if you buy the combo and the only thing you change out is the uh, the cup die basically for these you'll still need TC flanges and the pull through bulkhead fittings uh, but at least on the tool side we save the money on the hardened uh, hardware all right so let's get to putting one of these TC ferrules in I can't tell you exactly where a TC needs to go on a pot other than to say if it is for a heating element, generally I like to get it as low as you can get away with. One of the constraints is going to be where this clamp ends up on the uh, the pot. You certainly want the pot to be able to sit on a table or workbench um, without the clamp being hung up on the bottom, so make sure that that's clearing it. The other factor is this is going to need to seat on the side of, on the inside of the pot. So you can't have it hanging over. You're going to want it to be about probably a half inch from the bottom. So I'm just making sure there's a half inch gap between the bottom of the pot and the bottom of this here. So you can, uh, you can hold that there, take a marker. Just shove it through here and spin it around a little bit. So gives me a drilling location right there. We're going to use a 32 millimeter tungsten carbide hole saw bit. This is an inch and a quarter. Uh, 32 millimeter is close to inch and a quarter. Uh, tungsten carbide is amazingly good at doing this type of work. I do have some um, high viscosity cutting fluid on the bit already, so I'm not going to put anything on here. And hopefully this is not going to rattle the video too much. 
A lot of solid pressure and moderate speed. All right, that was probably five seconds of drilling time. That's what I mean. They are awesome. Uh, this makes uh, for a, a little bit of a sharp edge. Not too bad, but the way that I like to clean that up is to use a step drill bit that goes up in an inch and three-eighths. Just change that out on the drill. You could certainly use a file or some sandpaper or a deburring tool, which looks like this this works really well too but nothing beats the drill still a little sharp and then i also do that on the inside of the hole All right, next step, got to clean everything really well with some spirits, some acetone, something that evaporates quickly and will clean up any oils. You also want to clean the TC ferrule, get all the oils from handling off of that. Also want to clean the tapered bullet mandrel here to get all the oils off of that. Okay that drops in like that your bolts goes through here like that now what we want to do is this whole assembly the cup die and the bolt is going to go on the inside of the pot I'm going to have that stick out like that next you take your ferrule with the bullet mandrel and you shove it in there Take two of the large fender washers, the regular flat washer, and finally the nut. And thread that together snugly. Once you got it about hand tight, you're going to want to grab it from the inside and outside of the pot and kind of wiggle it in a circle just to be sure that everything is well centered. Okay. I think you can see that pretty well. I'll maybe zoom in on this a little bit. Okay, so you see how the, the bullet mandrel is not quite making it all the way into the hole. Next thing you're going to do is grab a couple of wrenches. I think a couple of uh, adjustable wrenches will do just fine. You're going to hold the nut, or the, I should say the head of the bolt, you're going to hold from the inside of the pot. And this works well if you let this hang over the edge of your workbench or work surface. Of course, using a socket set with a ratchet on here would be nice too, but you just start tightening. Now you don't have to hold the bolt on the inside of the pot all that tightly, but you don't want it to spin, so you might as well just hold on to it. Now, it does start getting hard. You're going to have to put your back into it. Okay, so right about here is where I like to grab my flux. Keep my flux in... A syringe like this with a blunt tip on it and that lets you squeeze some flux in here you can put some flux on the ferrule itself as well as the leading edge here and what that's going to do is lubricate as it comes in and also ensure that there's a lot of flux actually in that really fine gap that you're creating i didn't actually put the flux on for this demonstration because i'm not going to do finish the soldering today i'm going to do this tomorrow morning so i didn't want this the flux sitting on the surface for that long let me just continue tightening this so i can show you what the finished project looks like
Now it's starting to get easier. It's a, it's about to pop through. You're going to hear a pop right there. That was the bullet mandrel popping clear of the pot wall. Now, if you stop here, the ferrule is likely going to fall out. So what you want to do is figure out where your uh, wrench position is and do another full turn. So we're going to go all the way back around to there. Okay. You can go a little bit more for good measure. Okay, now take it apart. We'll show you what we got. All right, one thing you could see here, hopefully if I, is that the ferrule sticking in from the pot edge by about a 16th or maybe up to an eighth of an inch there. I find that that's a good spot to be. It allows some really good pressure here. And um, if you really wanted to go for cosmetics, you can kind of tap this back out a little bit uh, with a mallet uh, or hammer or whatever you've got uh, just to tap it a little bit more flush but that's a good install as far as I'm concerned you might want to observe on the outside whether or not you have it pulled in perfectly straight or not it depends um, if how important it is for that to be plumb and straight with the pot but just based on the the gap I see here all the way around it looks very consistent it doesn't look crooked there's no like tapering at all so that's that's really straight now let's look on the outside up close you know chalk it up with whatever you got and just make sure that it can't roll around make sure that this flange is as flat or parallel to the floor as possible in all different directions and you're going to flood this area with some flux and you can even wrap a couple of rings of solder around here and let them drop down into that groove uh, so that you can kind of be uh, hands off of it. And then start heating up the pot around a bigger diameter and then slowly work your way closer and closer to this work area. Don't ever put the flame right on the solder or on the flux itself. You'll burn it up and it won't really work very well. Uh, when you start getting closer and closer to putting heat directly here, I found that heating on the inside of the ferrule in a, in a nice circle, just keep walking around the pot and heating it evenly around here and just keep watching the solder. If it starts to flow, then you know you've got the right amount of heat. But um, never test for the flow when you got the heat directly on the solder. Of course, it's going to melt under direct flame. You can also try going inside the pot if you're working with a pot like this big 18 gallon one here. Uh, there's plenty of room to get the torch in there and just try to not focus on any one particular area. Try to keep the flame moving so that you're heating up the area evenly. But whatever you do, just watch for the solder to start flowing and make sure that it's all kind of melting evenly or all the way around. You can even feed some more in off of your solder uh, spool and um, just walk away at that point once everything's uh, nice and melted you can always come back and reheat it if there's any pock marks in there or anything but you know if it looks good leak test it and if it's not dripping then you know you're good this is what i'm calling the one step pull in process meaning you are pulling the ferrule in and making the dimple in the wall of the pot at the same time so it's a one step method there's also the method where you pull the dimple out of the pot. So you load the tool in the opposite direction without the ferrule even being in there. Flare the pot outward and then reload the tool backwards so that the uh, ferrule is getting pulled back into the pointy part of the flare. It is a more challenging install method that some people might think looks a little better on the outside of the pot. But I think... Um, it's really not worth damaging the pot if you don't get this to slip back into that hole you can kind of mess up the flare so i don't usually recommend doing that if you've got a scrap pot you want to try it on not a big deal these ferrules are four or five dollars so you can always experiment and see how you like that all right any questions i would uh, welcome them on the comments of this video or you can send an email to bobby at brewhardware.com uh, but i think you'll find this is a very neat and economical way of installing several TC ferrules into your pots without the expense of the specialty solder on flange.